Today, I wanna to demo and talk a little bit about a guitar that I think a lot of you are interested in, and that is uh, this Jackson Kelly. Now, this is a Jeff Loomis Signature Kelly. This is on loan to me through my buddy Simon, and uh, he let me borrow this because he knew that I was a big fan of the Kelly shape. And uh, a lot of you have asked me about this down in the comments, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to demo this for you guys and hopefully answer some questions that you may or may not have. Let's talk about the specs. This is the Pro Series Jeff Loomis Signature Kelly KE. It features a 25 and a half inch scale length, a basswood or basswood body, I'll let you guys argue about how to pronounce that down in the comments, with a sandblasted ash top. It has a three body maple neck with graphite reinforcement, scarf joint, and satin finish. It has a 12 to 16 inch compound radius. The fingerboard is made out of ebony and it has 24 jumbo frets and perloid shark fin inlays. On the neck we also have lumen lay side dots. The neck also has a heel mount truss rod adjustment wheel. It comes equipped with Seymour Duncan Jeff Loomis signature blackouts, a three-way toggle switch, and a single volume control. No toe knob to be found on this guy. It also comes equipped with the Floyd Rose 1500 series double locking tremolo bridge system. Jackson sealed die cast tuners and it is available in black. This guitar retails for $1,600, and while that might be expensive for a lot of you, I feel like that is sort of like the mid price point for Jackson guitars, and I have spent quite a bit of time with this guitar, and I think for a guitar in that price range, there are some really big pros and some cons also. I will go over those here in the demo. So really, all there is to do is plug this guy in and test it out, and then at the end, as a Kelly fan, I will give you my thoughts and opinions on if this is worth $1,600. Let's go. All right, I've got the Jeff Loomis Kelly plugged into this Ingle Invader. I'm gonna use this to demo it. I haven't played this amp in a while. It's a fun amp. Let's go to channel one here, and I can show you some clean tones. Just the bridge pickup. It's the neck pickup. Both of them? Very, very crisp and articulate pickups. The neck feels really, really good. It's super thin. Uh, let's go to a high gain channel here. And this is one of my big problems with this guitar. Let's turn the noise gate on here. Now, not just this guitar, but Seymour Duncan blackouts in general. Very, very hot pickups, very high output. In my experience with them, they take a lot to control, uh, sometimes even like two gates. So if you're looking for like really tight palm muted chugs. <laughs> I'm just using the built-in noise gate with the amp. Let's turn it all the way up and see if that helps. I don't think it's going to, but let's just try it. Like I have to turn the volume down about halfway to get the noise gate to clamp down on this amplifier. And I realize that I'm sitting very close to this amplifier, but this has just been my experience with blackouts in general every time that I've used them. But on the flip side of that equation, if you like high gain tones, if you are interested in metal, there are great pickups for that. Just take a little bit of extra effort to get them to not feed back, you know? As far as playability, this is one of the best playing guitars that I've ever played. The setup on it is tremendous, and I think that that says a lot about the guitar in general, that you can get it set up like this, because this might be some of the lowest action I've ever had on a guitar without it just buzzing all the hell. Just very noisy. So I have an X-Series Jackson Kelly over there and that has sort of been my like benchmark for a good setup because that guitar as well just uh, has a really, really great setup on it and I sort of try to emulate that on all my other guitars, but uh, this might be better if I'm being honest. Now,
Now, there is a big problem with this guitar, and it's kind of embarrassing. This is a $1,600 Signature Series guitar, and while, yes, Jackson does make more expensive guitars, I would expect a guitar in this range to have this common problem with Floyd Roses way more under control than it is. And that is that the springs on this guitar are absolutely out of control when it comes to noise. Uh, let me see if I can actually decrease the feedback enough on this amp to show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> You can hear the springs resonating almost as loud as the strings. And when Simon loaned me this guitar, one of the things that he said he really disliked about it was the low end sounded like just messed up. Like it just sounded flubby and weird and not tight. And I think the problem he was experiencing is these springs resonate so bad that they actually interact with the notes in a really like uh, disjointed, like disharmonious way. And it just makes it sound really uh, not good. Now this is a pretty easy fix. We're gonna open up the back cavity and we're just gonna put some foam in there and see if that gets that under control. But uh, it's just really surprising to me that Jackson would release a $1,600 guitar that had such noisy springs in it. Like you can buy the Floyd Rose noiseless springs and they're not that much more money. Like, why wouldn't you just have those in there? Let's open up the back and see if we can take care of that. I'm actually kind of interested to open this up as well and just see like what's going on back here. Uh, if we just have like a standard claw or if they have like an upgraded claw. You know, again, a $1,600 guitar is not cheap and it's not like this has a licensed Floyd Rose. Oh yeah. All right, so opening this up, the reason that I believe it is so noisy is just because they're using these kind of like whatever springs in here. I mean, there's just the spring noise, you know? I'm gonna get a piece of foam and put it in here just to see if that takes care of the problem for the rest of this demo. But I think the real solution to this would be to upgrade to the Floyd Rose noiseless springs. Okay, so what I'm gonna do to combat this problem, and you could just use a piece of foam. Uh, it doesn't have to be one of these, it's just what I have handy. Um, we're gonna put one of these uh, Solar Guitar string dampener things. We're gonna put it up here on the other side of the nut, but we're also gonna put one just in here in the spring cavity, uh, like so, and then we'll put the plate on. And what that should do is mute the strings so they don't resonate. Oh yeah, that fits right in there, great. So you can use foam or something like that. Uh, I actually had to use paper towels one time in the studio and that was just what was available to me at the time. But one of the things that's nice about using a non-porous material, like one of these little string dampener things, is that it will not catch in the springs. Like when you push down on your whammy bar and the springs extend, if you have something sort of like porous, like foam or paper towel, whatever, in there, uh, it can catch in the springs and it can stop it from going back to zero and you'll be slightly out of tune. So that's a bummer. I think this is probably actually gonna help this guitar a lot. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if that helped. Much, much better. Like you can hear, I'm not getting nearly as many res... The pickups are still really hot, but I'm not getting nearly as many uh, resonances in the low end. Now, this is a good quick fix for this, but the real solution to me would be to upgrade the kind of shitty components. And I'm totally just guessing on this, but because these are behind a control cavity and they don't look sexy on the front of the guitar, that's probably uh, why they're not that great. Let me show you. So for example, this is my Deviant Guitars Grimoire. You guys have probably seen me use this quite a bit on the channel. And uh, also, magnetic back plates. Those are cool, save you a lot of time there. What's going on back here, if you look at this, we have a big brass block, we have noiseless springs, and we have a shallower claw. Now that's probably about $200 worth of upgrades, but if you like Floyd Roses, if you like the system, it's well worth it in my opinion, because it will give you all the functionality of a Floyd Rose without the limitation of like the cheaper springs and the, the cheaper block and claw that comes on this expensive guitar. But yeah, just simply putting that in there with the springs really cut down the noise. <laughs> Thank you. 
Look, we can actually get our noise gate to clamp down if I just turn this way a little bit. So if you own one of these guitars and you notice the spring noise from the Floyd Rose, uh, just put some foam in there, a sock or something, and we'll take care of it. So my final thoughts on this guitar. A $1,600 guitar is out of a lot of people's price ranges, but if you are really interested in this specific Kelly, or if you really like Jeff Loomis as a player, it is probably worth it for you to invest in one because it is an excellent instrument. It just has some caveats. You have good components in here if you like the Seymour Duncan Blackouts. If you like Floyd Roses, or if you are getting into Floyd Roses, a 1500 series Floyd Rose is a really good tremolo. It is much better than the cheaper licensed Floyd Roses that Jackson puts on a lot of their guitars. The ash top is beautiful. I really like this open pour finish, even though I think it does kind of look like Ikea furniture. Uh, it still looks and feels really, really cool. Now, I would say the big caveat with this guitar is in the $1,600 price bracket, I would sort of expect a guitar that got to me and didn't have anything that I had to fix with it. And that might be exclusive to this specific guitar, but looking at the components in the back, I really highly doubt it. I mean, at bare minimum, it would have been nice if this guitar would have shipped with noiseless springs or just something to cut down on the spring noise in the back because it's way out of control in my opinion. And if you are not familiar with the Floyd Rose system, like maybe you're just buying this because you think it looks really cool or you're a big fan of Jeff Loomis and you get it and you're like, why does this sound like that? That might be a big deterrent for you and it might make you feel like you just wasted $1,600, even though it's a very easy fix if you're familiar with Floyd Roses. Special thanks to Simon for letting me borrow this guitar and special thanks to you for being here with me. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.